Turns up there, Miriam and Daka. They're working every day on the farm. Are you working them hard? Not too hard. Not hard enough. <laughs> yeah, Erwin's doing a good job. And when the, next, the next time you come, there's going to be a there's going to be a wooden pavilion here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll let it burn down a little bit. So what's the other we do? We go stop? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you, and uh, not that you need any introduction, but I'll start things off. But yeah, this is a chance to share my father. Your, your personal experience with father is really good. But whatever you want to talk about, <laughs> it's your night. Two hours is fine. Three hours is fine. Four hours is better. Yeah, we told uh, we told Jerry we don't allow drones here. <laughs> He's breaking the bluestone rule. Time for the shotgun. Who's taking it? Is it real? Jerry, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he's got a camera on that or not. Yes, he probably right. does. Yeah. But it's pretty good to have it in, in the middle of the trees. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good it's a skill. It's loud. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off soon. Hey, your pigs are nice and fat. Did you see the piglets? Did you see the little piglets? No. Oh, yeah, you got three little ones. Yes, the best of them. Yeah. It's so fatty. It's not a shortage of fat. Never run out of 
Okay, well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, let's give it up for the king and queen and cooks and everything. It's really, it's, it's really because they're here that we're here. <laughs> uh, it, you know, we, we were deciding uh, where to purchase a farm. Uh, we had, there was a small group of us, like an intentional community, and we were just at a decision point on where we should move to. Should it be Lancaster County, Lehigh Valley, where in Pennsylvania? We knew we wanted to go to Pennsylvania. God was guiding us. But then we went to that fateful Bible study at Young's and the King's household, and then God spoke. This is where you need to have your farm. So here we are four years later, and we're just glad everybody could be here. Uh, so I had this strong feeling a few weeks ago that uh, we should open up uh, Friday nights for like uh, time for sharing about Father's uh, life. There's uh, people here that have had personal experiences with Father, and uh, we're just so fortunate that we have two of True Father's children with us <laughs> who've had a lot of experiences being raised by, by uh, Father. Uh, so uh, last week we had the opportunity to listen to Young Jinim uh, share share some words with us, and I think it ended up going about three hours, which was really wonderful. <laughs> We're in the dark. If you watch the video, it's just this Night dark time. this dark video. <laughs> you just hear a voice in the darkness, but it was really really nice. Uh, so uh, Cook Jinim uh, was gracious enough to. Uh, agree to come and to share some of his experiences growing up and uh, his life and his adult life, whatever he wants to share. So uh, maybe I can just uh, offer a short prayer before we begin. Our beloved Heavenly Father, Father, we're grateful uh, to be alive. We're grateful to be living at this most critical time in all of human history, Father, where the micro and the macro are merging together at this uh, apex, Heavenly Father, where your will, your kingdom your long-awaited kingdom can finally be established. So, Father, we're grateful to be guided by our true Father. We're grateful for the victorious uh, Cain and Abel that are here tonight, and we're grateful that we can uh, be here to hear these words tonight. We pray that you can be here with us and share this experience with us, and that we really invite you here, Father, and we pray sincerely in the name of the Noel family and all the blessed central families gathered here. Adieu. 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 Hello, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you folks. Who was here for a Freedom Society yesterday? Yeah. What did you think about that video? Oh, it's great. <laughs> Pretty good. It was very interesting. It's great. What did you like about it? Well, it, was, it I mean, it was so inspiring to hear that actually science, the more they study science, it, that people, it's giving more of a God and this idea in itself and that the um, for me it, I was talking about he was talking about Genesis and explaining clearly scientifically all those things in the Bible and it was so that was inspiring. Hugh Ross, he was pretty good, huh? Yeah. So he went over the order of creation and showed how exactly the creations that the scientists the process in which creation happened as understood by today's science, matches identical to what's presented in the order of creation in the Bible. Right. Right. Six days. The same order, the same sequence of creation. Mm. That was really interesting. And so, you know, scientists are looking at that now, and they, he was calculating the probability of, you know, the Bible getting, a book getting that right, the order of creation right, and it's like, you know, 10 to the 300th power. <laughs> Likelihood. So at this point right now, we're getting to a point where, you know, science is basically faced with a dilemma. <clears throat> science is at the point where it's proving the, <coughs> the existence of God. Praise God. That's the dilemma which, that's this major <coughs> wall which science has, has come to face right now. It's everywhere now. The whole world is <coughs> completely changing. It's not even funny how quickly it is. The, the, the debate um, among people who are really, well, intellectual, who have a brain, who study, who study things, who know things, the argument is basically over. God exists. 
And it's a God which pre-exists time and space. So it's a God which exists time and space, probably before time and space. It's exactly as Father described when he's talking about the God of night and the God of day. Have you guys heard about the God of night and the God of day? <coughs> what did you think when you first heard it? Interesting. <laughs> be, be honest. <laughs> Come on! I was afraid there were two gods. <laughs> you thought Father lost his mind, right? <laughs> He must be crazy! Got too old! <laughs> what? <laughs> a god of night and a god of day? What is this? <laughs> but, you know, the definition which he gave was so precise. It's not, you know, so precise, but also as you, as you come to understand the revelations and the un the understanding which is coming now through science, it, it really explains the fundamental nature of the Creator. That the Creator God is the God, who is the eternal God who pre-exists time and space, who is the Creator and the origin of time and space. And this notion, this is a very unique notion, which is only in the, you know, the 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 theology or the study of deism or of God, which only exists within the Christian framework. That's right. <coughs> only the God of the of the Judeo-Christian tradition is a God who exists beyond time and space. <coughs> All the other pagan gods, they exist within time and space. And so when Father made the distinction between the God of night and the God of day and said that the distinction was that the God of night was a God who existed before creation, and then he explained that the God of day was, was a God which existed <coughs> after creation, he made the fundamental distinction between paganism and monotheism. It was a theological explanation and definition which was absolutely pr precise. In that manner, it was a scientific definition. And that definition which Father proclaimed when we first heard it and thought he was crazy, as we come to understand science today, we're, we're, we have to look at you know, the direction of science and say, yeah, he was right. Mm -hmm. That is the real definition of the Creator God. Mm -hmm. The God which exists beyond time and space. And we know what all the other gods are. The gods of day, all the pagan deities. They are basically created beings who <coughs> worship themselves, engage in idol work. Paganism is not is not a new tradition. It's an ancient tradition. <coughs> And that's exactly what the Han mother is talking about when she deifies herself. She is basically opening the doors to paganism. Because she is now making herself a false second god. And the whole slew of gods will follow her. But they are not real gods. They are pretenders to the eternal god's throne. Because there is only one god which pre-existed creation, which is beyond time and space. And this is the unique thing about that. Father said that when he talked about the God of night and the God of day in his final explanation, he basically, he basically said that I am of the God of night. I existed before I was born. I existed before creation. <laughs> I mean, for, for a, a human being who, who has a fleshly, earthly body, to understand the nature of the eternal God and to define the nature of the eternal God and to say that He is the eternal God, wow, that's big.
<laughs> but when you look at what he says, his definition is absolutely correct and is now in many ways being confirmed by science. How could he just make that up if he wasn't real? This one story, I think, is the story, that story which best lets you understand what Father is like. If you, if you spend time with Father, you spend most of the time thinking, oh my God, he must be a madman. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he says is so unbelievable. <laughs> Could he possibly be the returning Lord? <laughs> but, uh, but the answer to that is, is very simple. Just wait 20 years and you'll see what he says. It comes true. <laughs> and that's the thing that drives you nuts about Father. What can you say? There's nothing you can say. What are you going to say to God? He created everything. He knows everything. <laughs> You know, when you exist in this world and you, 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 you achieve a certain station in life, a certain understanding, a certain knowledge, a certain success, you, you think you understand the, ways, the way the world works. And then when you, you know, present that to Father and he tells you to do something else completely and you're like, what? Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> That's the difference. Because Father's not working within our human time frame. The things he does is not for, for, for our profit and our benefit today. He is thinking about the future direction of providence, of human history, direction of the entire world. How, how his actions within his in, immediate environment, which is, which is the microcosm of the world, will affect the macrocosm of the world. So as Father moved through this world as the center of the universe, he was the microcosm. Everything that happened in this world had ripples throughout time and space. And so when we look at today's environment where the entire world is changing, it's changing so fast. And look at the way the politics in, in America has changed. With the Trump revolution and how that's reverberating throughout the entire world, how the, all the governments and power structures are all around the world are being completely shaken. It's amazing. And what's driving that? What's driving that revolution? It's the new media on the internet. People telling the truth as they see it and they understand it, unfiltered by big corporations or governments. So things that were hidden and unseen are now being seen by regular folks. And as regular folks have their eyes open and they look at the look at the the people who rule over them, they look at them and they say, "My God, those bastards are ugly. <laughs> Fucking demons. Blood-sucking vampires. <laughs> Pedophile child molesters." <laughs> This is who we're ruled by? <clears throat> but where, where is the, who is the pioneer who pioneered New Media? Reverend Sun Young Moon. 1982. What is the business model which New Media uses? <clears throat> no, they use they use the business model that father established. You have the media company which produces the media, and then they do fundraising with nutraceuticals. Mm -hmm. Either that or with you know survival tools like guns, 
equipment for you know survival or camping or fishing or firearms. That's basically what Father's been doing his entire life with the church business club. Hoping to stream. You know, funding the Washington Times. You know, but funding it with ginseng, sushi, fish. That is the business model. Mm. Mm. And you know, all those early, all those early, these, all these guys like Alex Jones or Lisa Haven or all these other people who are out there in the internet space, yeah. next news networks, they all get a lot of their alternative news from the Washington Times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Washington Times was the first alternative news source. That's right. Mm -hmm. Father is the pioneer of new media today. You know, the Washington Times initially broke that story about George Bush being a, having a, a pedophile ring in Washington, D.C. back in the 80s. Wow. Back in the 80s. But because of that foundation now, <coughs> the whole world has changed so fast. I mean, now the Pope is being exposed as being the pedophile that he is. <coughs> would you have ever thought that it would come to the day that the entire Vatican hierarchy up to the Pope gets exposed for being pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> Who could imagine all this stuff? <laughs> you make a movie or write a book about it and with that storyline, nobody would believe you. It'd be like, a, nobody would buy the book and be too crazy. <laughs> And all of this happened in the last four years. Since Father passed away, since Father went to the spirit world, that's when the entire world started to change completely. Now all the power centers of the world are all freaked out. They're saying, <coughs> what's going on? We can't put the genie back in the bottle. The <laughs> <laughs> people are coming with pitchforks. <laughs> More than that, yeah. And iPhones. <laughs> I'll just bring my car. That's the interesting thing. You know, if you study the principle, study the Bible, you all study the principle, right? It's all the story about the path least traveled, right? The way God's providence works. God's providence is, hasn't been much about the high and mighty. I mean, he, he, brought, he brought David up as the king of Israel, but he didn't keep his family there forever. He worked through the prophets who were running around the streets of Jerusalem as beggars, screaming out into nowhere into space with everybody ignoring them. You know, even when God brought his people out of, it, out of the slavery in Egypt and they came to Canaan, the ten spy, 12 spies were sent in and only two gave a good report. It's kind of in the nature of God's problem. division between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The ten northern tribes were wiped out pretty quickly. <coughs> Providence doesn't go with the majority. More often than not, it goes with the remnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Faithful remnant. <laughs> 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 because there's a big difference between the, the remnant and the majority. The majority is full of themselves and full of the world. And because they're so full of themselves, there's no room for God. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, for those for those people who 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 are who are of the world and in the world and popular in the world, they boast in this in this world that they that they are great. But do you think God recognizes their boast? He does. Do you think that inspires God? <coughs> <laughs> a little bunch of ants say, hey, I, I built the big ant hill. I'm greater than you, God. <laughs> if you boast of, the, of, of, of your accomplishments in the world and of the things of the world, do you think that's going to impress the, the Creator? No. Mm. That's what principle teaches us. That's what Father teaches us. God was looking for something better. Something real. Real emotion, right? Real fear. Not just I love you in convenience, or when you give me free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but he was looking for those people who would love him when he when he when he sent them plagues, when he gave them difficulty, and trials, and tribulations. <laughs> when the entire world moved against them. when they were scorned and beaten but yet still loved the Lord that's the only thing that's really real right that's the only thing that can actually inspire and impress the Almighty God who created the entire universe. True fear. Yeah. Yeah, the more the more I look back, it's amazing everything that father father did. He really knew everything. But now that he's gone to the spirit world, he's doing everything much quicker. He <laughs> <laughs> can't even keep up with what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you got no those more. crazy he family feathers words. saying that he doesn't exist anymore, yet he's changed the entire world. <laughs> yeah, so what can you do? Father is the man. He is, he is Christ and is eternal. came to complete the mission which Jesus Christ left and told and he did something. And this is the confusion with the, with the heritage federation people have. They, they they think that the mission of true father was to love and marry true mother, and that's it. That's mm. the that's the most important relationship of the, of the Adam, is the conjugal relationship. But think about it. What does this principle tell? Us? Thank 
existence of God, such a creation, or the conjugal relationship. That's the most important relationship, the realm of heart, which we pursue in our lives. Well, principle talks about four realms of heart, right? Right? Between husband and wife, of course, but father, parents, and children, between brothers and sisters. But what is God, what, what was God trying to do when he was establishing his order of creation? Yeah, he was establishing true love. But what kind of love is it? Was it a, a love for one generation? have a wife, now then the, the, the world can do whatever the hell, hell they want. They become, can become homosexuals, and transgender, and pedophile. <coughs> Bestiality, that's all good now. Mm -hmm. A little, little bit more than that, right? God was, God wants to make an intergenerational relationship, a permanent relationship, because God is an eternal being who transcends time and space. So He wants the, our relationship to to resemble His eternal nature, and that's the fundamental problem with the horizontal relationship symbolized or epitomized by the relationship between male and female. It's a horizontal relationship. It's a relationship within the same generation. It's a relationship which doesn't have a past or a future. That's the problem. It's transitory. comes to an end because the generation is <coughs> And so when you when you think about the nature of love, of course the horizontal relationships are important. But more even more important than the horizontal is the vertical relationship. Mm -hmm. Because the vertical relationship is the, is the means by which that love, or that seed of love, tra transitions through time and space. <coughs> how, it, how it goes from being a transitory relationship to being a timeless relationship. An immortal relationship. And that's why at the end, when as you live as you live life and as Father lived life, the most important mission for the Lord of Second Advent to do to establish that eternal relationship <coughs> between this physical realm and the eternal God was to be able to transfer that love, the seed of love which he had for the Creator. To, to whom he transferred that seed to the people of this earth for that original seed to be passed from the father's generation to the son's generation. Mm -hmm. And that's why as time goes by, in the context of time and space, 
the most important relationship to carry on God's providence is the relationship between Father and Son. Mm -hmm. Because that seed has to go from the Father to the next generation. And that's the main point of, of the principle, when you study the principle. And it's made even more specific and clear in the OSDP, in the original substance department. That the fulfillment of, of the purpose of God's creation on earth is to have his original substance, his seed, on earth, eternal without interruption. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose of creation. Mm -hmm. So when you understand the principle and the original substance in the context of the vertical relationship through time, then you can see very specifically and very clearly the claim that the horizontal relationship between husband and wife is the most important through time. This is the great lie and the great deception of the fallen argument. Mother cannot carry the seed because she's mm -hmm. a woman. And therefore, when she claims to carry on the authority of true father, she betrays the principle. And she betrays God. That is why her crime is not a personal crime. It's not it's not a crime against her son or her, her other sons or her siblings or her, her friends and family. It's a crime against God. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to understand. We are people who have gathered because we have heard the divine principle. And as people who have heard the principle, in our lives we have come to the conclusion that yes, we believe in God and we believe in the Bible. And the Bible is pretty good stuff, but it's kind of hard to understand. <laughs> Lots of it, you know try to figure it out, it you know, doesn't make sense sometimes. I, there's been a lot of wonderful Christian theologians throughout the year, years who have given great elucidations of, of the Bible and offered many insights, but there is nothing like the principal explanation mm -hmm. of the Bible. In the world. There is and if you honestly look at the principle and consistently look at what it teaches, there is no way you can separate lineage from the exposition of the divine principle. You read it. It's very clear. God wants his son to be not only the heir of his property, but to be the heir of his spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. His love. The disciple that is a son. That's what God is 
That's what Christ was here to say. <coughs> that's, why the, the, that's why Jesus Christ was not able to finish his mission while he was on earth. Because he only had a disciple who wasn't his son. <coughs> the spirit was saved, but the body was not. And that is why when we look at Christians, they've received spiritual salvation and so they can go <coughs> to paradise, but because they're physically not separated from original sin, their salvation is only spiritual, not physical. And the only way you can get to physical salvation is when the body of God inherits it. And the only person that can be the actual body of God by blood is his son. Mm -hmm. No son, no principle, mm -hmm. no providence, no fulfillment of the perfect experience. That's why the Han Mother's a fraud. You can't teach the divine principle separate from the Son. <laughs> it's just not possible. So well, that's the big dilemma which all the lovers of divine principle face all over the world. Do they love the principle and God or do they love themselves? <coughs> because if you love the principle and God, it requires you to humble yourself before his love. And you can see it. That's a struggle which the family fed ministers all struggle with. They feel that they can minister just as good as Father, and they're certainly better in lecturing divine principle than this young king. <laughs> Am I wrong? That sound about right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, life sucks for them, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Play poker, you better know how to hold them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 They're bluffing. They don't even know. They're it. Bluffing, right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> they thought they won by ch by chasing us out, but we gave them nothing. Everything they took, they stole. Mm -hmm. Didn't sign anything over to them. <laughs> and that's the thing about legitimacy. When you get ill-gotten loot, as time goes by, it becomes a noose around your neck and you hang yourself with it. Mm. <coughs> but time redeems the righteous, justifies. to go the path that God will <coughs> and only face trials and tribulations. God will not forget them. And every deprivation you suffered, 
God will replay, repay to your descendants. See, that's the difference between those heretics, the people here. It's for us, it's not about what happened today. What will be tomorrow? That's the, that's the good and the bad of it. If you've done the right deeds at the right time, if you've taken the road less traveled when you should, when you stood in righteousness, when the whole world against you was stood against you, those are eternal treasures which nobody can take away. That's the sad story about the Han mother and her foolishness. Her rebellion only gained her just a few years of, of personal aggrandizement and glory. <coughs> the whole world is changing so quickly and Satan's kingdom is coming to an end. She sold her eternal, eternal life and eternal value for a few years of arrogance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that makes her a very foolish thing. But for us, we've had so many blessings. Oh, and we've been out here in beautiful wilderness of Pennsylvania. <laughs> I've had my work release, work, work hours reduced. <laughs> I get to spend time with my kids and see them grow up, take them to their football game. <laughs> the blessings are just so many. <coughs> you can only be grateful to the Lord for the circumstances which He puts you in. Mm -hmm. Good to be out here. I hope you are all having fun too. It's <laughs> <laughs> never dull. Never dull. <laughs> Quite a nice area out here, Greg. <laughs> a lot of hard work, huh? Mm -hmm. we need torches. Torches. <laughs> and, and the people who've joined your community up there, Neil, who is that? Neil Harry. Neil and Harry. Denton. Denton and George. Denton's out there. Who else is there? Tom. 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 There's Tom. <laughs> Is that you, Tom, back yeah, there? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All day. So your pigs are doing well? Yes, they are. <laughs> Earl is here, too. 
They certainly oh, got man. fat. <laughs> Their life has been too good. Yeah. <laughs> Feed them well. That's so the bacon. <laughs> yeah, it's very impressive what you guys did out here. I remember when the first time I came out here was quite a bit of just starting the projects. You guys got a lot done, didn't you? Looking good. The interns helped a lot. Yes. <laughs> Have they been working you guys hard? <laughs> <laughs> Have you volunteered to be out here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you're not excited to be here? No, no, it's been really good. <laughs> <laughs> End of the day, so. <laughs> it was a hot day. <laughs> so you get to know what slave being a slave is like. But she's debt free. Teaching them. I want to be an owner, not a sir. Sir, Erlen. working on the land for your food. Erlen. Earl, 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 Erlen is Uncle Laban. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Earl, you no, Uncle Laban no. there? <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Instilling the desire for ownership. <laughs> so you've learned how to grow crops? Earl teach you all of that now? You can go back oh, to England and do it? Teacher. Yeah, Earl knows a lot about that stuff. You've got a beautiful garden out there, Earl. Thank you. Nice job. It's for you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you say er, it needs weeding? Is that what you said? <laughs> no weeding. No weeding in Earl's garden. Just food. So what else you guys want to talk about? What was it like when you were in charge of the whole Tongue Hill Foundation and what Father thought you were doing? Uh, we're very busy. Lots of things to do. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty busy work. Not a lot of time for anything. You know, when I first got there, we had 34 companies and 80%, eight, almost 90% were losing money. Not only that, the churches, you know, were, were not profitable. Because, you know, the local churches could kind of sustain themselves, but the headquarters required massive subsidies to function. And, you know, Koreans, I don't know if you've had experience with Korean leaders, they're not the easiest people to work with. <laughs> yes, <no. laughs> So, you know, I had to spend a lot of time interviewing and firing people. So you, you can imagine how popular that may be. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to work on stopping all of their other extracurricular activities. <laughs> you know what the national pastime in Korea is in a, in a public institution, whether it be a church or government? Golf. Golf. Gambling. No, embezzlement. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you, the entire nation is trained from the time where they got an army on how you embezzle from public institutions. <laughs> it's culturally ingrained through 5,000 years of history. <laughs> Systematic. Gen it's genetic now. It's in their DNA. <laughs> you know that if you take, if you go around the world and you give various races or ethnic groups IQ tests, you know who has the highest average IQ in the world, right? Jewish? Well, yeah, they're, but they're a small ethnic group, but I mean a really larger ethnic group. The East Asians have the highest average Chinese, Chinese are very at about 110. And basically what, what they do is 
basically they use all of their creative intelligence to figure out how to make a scam to steal from the government. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Who's an agent here? <laughs> Any agent no, can no. tell you that. <laughs> Well, you know, now America's kind of learning from the Chinese, so our government's becoming like that. <laughs> if you go to Washington, that's all they do all day. Figure out scams to steal from the government. But that's what happens in those cultures. It's endemic. It's everywhere. So, so you know, when, when they're at the bottom, they may be nice guys and really publicly minded, but when they get a little bit of power, they start getting creative. <laughs> <laughs> so when you start plugging all these leaks, you, you can imagine you can imagine what kind of culture shocks they get. Into. Um, very similar to Italy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Italy is another old culture. We're going back all the way to ancient Rome. A similar uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Trump is facing. It's, it's that's the big battle of, of trying to to be a president or to lead in that situation because you need you need to to make a coalition large enough to support you so that you can have enough political power to continue to do work. And so you've got to be always making deals with these bad guys. You're not trading goods, you're trading bets. <laughs> to try to make an overall good. <laughs> that's what that's what life in public institutions is like. <laughs> How you trade bets. I think that statement, if you've worked in government, you can relate to. That's why when we, when we talk about God's kingdom and the ideal world, it certainly is not a world of centralized power. Mm -hmm. This is the great insight which the founding fathers had. The great challenge of humanity and the great misfortune of humanity has been just that, the plague of humanity. It's been centralized forces, which is called centralized. The kingdom of hell on earth is the nation and the world of out of control centralized power. It is communism, which is the greatest evil in all of its form. And this is the revolution which was brought. When we talk about the revolution, people think American Revolution, that's where the freedom came from. Mm -mm. Oh. It started when Martin Luther took the 95 Thesis and nailed it on the Catholic <laughs> Church. <laughs> <laughs> It started when Christians said, <coughs> Hell, I don't need a freaking Pope to go to, get, to go to heaven. I'll do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the priest to tell me what's in the Bible. I'll do it for myself. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Little people. Reading the Bible. yearning to understand God, the Creator, the omniscient, omnipotent God. All over the world, just little folks reading the Bible. That's what made the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. 
And when they read that Bible, and they they read that they are created in the image of God, and God created them as his sons and daughters, intended them to be above the angels, endowed with the gifts of freedom, free will. You understand that, and you feel that in your heart. That's what motivates you to pick up a gun <laughs> and walk up to Goliath and say, you know what, I think I'm going to shoot you. And you know, that's what this world needs. It needs people. It needs men. Men who say, fuck you to the government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, real rednecks. Hillbillies <laughs> and rednecks. They understand what the what a relationship with God is all about. And they are rude, crude, and totally socially unacceptable. <laughs> but you know what? They don't give a damn. <laughs> And because they don't give a damn, they're free to serve the Lord. <laughs> Got a coffee redneck over here. He's turning red. Absolutely. I wouldn't know anybody like that. <laughs> But that's an interesting time in this country, I tell you. You, know, you look at you look at the Bundys out there in Nevada. Mm -hmm. That's what America's about. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. men like that. Mm -hmm. People who stand up for the land, mm -hmm. for their rights, for the property which was inherited there. People who don't take it lying down from the federal government. Right. Nope. Those are real Americans. Yes. Those are the people we got to support. Yeah. People like the Bundys. If there are more people like the Bundys who stand up, then America will take back its freedoms. That's what we need. Well, it's good now. You know, we have we have the Constitution of Channel Cook. It makes it very clear about what we're fighting for. You guys all understand the Constitution? A lot of freedom in that document. <laughs> Praise God. It's very powerful. There's a lot of freedom in that document. That would be a good place to live, tell you that. <laughs> good place to live. You know, that's what liberty is all about. Liberty in the truest sense, in the most practical sense, is very simple. It's freedom from the man. <laughs> Being able to live out your life and Never see a federal officer. <laughs> Can you imagine how beautiful that kind of world would be? <laughs> if you n never have Uncle Sam calling on you for whatever reason, that's the kingdom of heaven. That's the kind of world we need to do. And 
that's the amazing thing. That's the conclusion of the divine principle. God, you should have seen how much those archangels hated the freedom society. <laughs> 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 But that freedom to say, it comes right out of the principle, it comes right out of fun. Mm -hmm. And father, father brought up the freedom to say to everybody, except the father. All wow. oh, those lovers of big government and big bureaucracy. See them squirm when you talk about the freedom of society. <laughs> 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 when, when you lay out what is God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom from communism to a free society just before anarchy. <laughs> you know, that's a spectrum of all political spectrums. There's anarchy here, no government to 100% government, which is communism. And the kingdom of heaven is right here. At less than 10% of, of the society as being owned, controlled by government. It's as close to anarchy as you can get. <laughs> without there being anarchy. That's the kingdom of heaven. Now, be honest with me, folks. Did, have any of you ever thought that when it came to actually define the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven would be the society just before anarchy? <laughs> but that's what it is. That's the conclusion of the divine principle. That's what we're working for. Yep. Tell you, if you're a Federalist, you really won't like the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the amazing thing about the principle and about what Father brought. His entire life people were saying he was a dictator, a tyrant, and he was bringing an Iranian theocracy, but that's not what he brought. The fruit of his life is the freedom society. And that's amazing. Even if, if you understand the principle and everything that Father taught and the conclusions which we come to because of the principle of Father, even if he weren't the Messiah, my God, you would want to make him one. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the place where I want to live. <laughs> Think about it, guys. Where do you want to live the rest of your life? Where do you want your children to grow up in? What kind of society? Pennsylvania it's kind of is, is a fairly bureaucratic state even at the local level you have to go through all sorts of these types of problems I'm sure you've experienced that mm -hmm. but imagine what it's, what it's like as you get closer and closer to Washington as the state gets bigger and bigger. Just think about how much things have changed in terms of going through the hoop today versus 20 or 30 years ago. Can you imagine your 
children living in a society where you can't do anything, you can't even fart without getting a permit? Well, you'll get fined for you want your kids to live in that kind of society? Urban tag? You'll get a tax bill every time you do. You have to buy fart permits. <laughs> Can you imagine your kids having to grow up in that common as hell? <laughs> but that's the hell in which so many people around the world live in. That's the big, that's the big problem when you live in a free society. Everybody benefits from free society and free exchange, and free market economics. But there's nobody, nobody, because that system is, you know, open society of exchange, there's no vested interest in advertising and promoting and pushing that that's the best society to keep. And so you get specific interest, like government, big business, which actually lobby for a less free society, which make commercials for and propaganda for, for more control, and less free, more regulation, so that you, you're being forced to buy their products. And that's the problem with the, with the societies we live in. It's this propaganda. The propaganda are being paid for by big interests. And the people just eat it up, don't understand that they're being played. And every time they vote for more government intervention in healthcare, the healthcare gets worse and every, all the drugs become more expensive. And so then they vote for even more intervention from the government. And it always gets worse. It never gets better. <coughs> but yet the people don't, can't figure it out. You just want to say, wake up, dummy. <laughs> yeah. It was better when the government wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep on asking for more government when it keeps on making it worse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the problem. The government takes over education and basically indoctrinates people to believe in people. And that's exactly what happens when you leave Christ. There is, a, there is no more guarantee of liberty of inalienable right, rights. Because you don't have God to give it give you those things in you. You're putting your faith in men who are changeable and egotistical and selfish and demonic. Who will only serve their self interest when they have power. Who does God not be strong? The exorcist. conscience and the soul, which turns an individual away from pursuing absolute truth. That is why you can never have an enlightened society, a restrained society, without the fear of God. Because only God, the eternal Father, can change the surface of man. That's why there's only one one God to honor. That's God the Father. From the Father, but where we get our life, our lineage, our love. <coughs> yes. 
nobody else. And we honor our Father by keeping our promises to Yeah, it's not that complicated. <coughs> and that's our challenge. You guys have to see God, the eternal God, the Father in Heaven, as being your Father. You have to remember the promises that you made. Here. Those promises have to be real to you and important. That is how you honor your father. Beautiful message. <laughs> Beautiful message. Mm -hmm. Coach, could you share some of your personal experiences with Father? Things that um, you know that you were with him that he didn't have those kind of experiences. Well, that's the thing. If you're really with Father when you're with him, it's very difficult because he tortures you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny that. <laughs> How much do you want to be tortured? <laughs> I love the pain. I love the pain. <laughs> you know, you know the, the sun burns bright. When you go really close to the sun, it gets very hot. <laughs> And Father is the brightest spirit and soul that ever walked the face of the earth. That's true. Have you been fishing with him? Absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. <laughs> you have to be very quiet. Make one noise, you get your head bit off. <laughs> when, I was, when I was at her age, with 12, 14, you wake up 4.30 in the morning, you're out at the ocean by 5, and you don't come back until 9 at night, and the whole period in between, you're cutting chum. <laughs> <laughs> Try doing that for a whole summer. <laughs> you think pig crap smells bad. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> the, guts at 90 degrees. Especially the bubbling chum. <laughs> who knows what I'm talking about? Well. Are there people who actually know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> A few people. Well, am I lying? No, no, I tell the truth. No, no, no. <laughs> Does it sound about right? Yeah, the dirty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You said the word okay. Did you did you know okay what what uh, the, the word really means? In, uh, father, he I was reading one speech and Father says okay means open kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, with Father, you, when you hear something that Father says, yeah. you can't understand it. You have to wait 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> when you wait 20 years, then you see what Father did, and it, then you say, okay, now I got it. I wish I knew 20 years ago. <laughs> 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 Maybe it would have been more appreciative. <laughs> but no, that's what you learn. You learn about your limitations. Yeah. How, in many ways, as a human being, you're very inadequate to serve Father. Mm -hmm. Anything to say those uh, uh, those sanctuary and those struggles with their children's uh, faith 
Well, you, you haven't tortured your children enough. Very <laughs> 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 too nice there. <laughs> so how should we exactly torture them? <laughs> the when you torture them problem. enough, when they grow up, they'll appreciate you more. <laughs> if you've been too nice to them throughout your entire life, they're going to hate you for the, for the rest of their life. They're going to be complaining about everything you didn't do for them. <laughs> they are already grown up. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> you have to live with the fruits of what you sow. <laughs> You see, parents are there not to be nice, but to be mean, so that they can transfer the, the, the knowledge and the understanding to their children of how they can be strong in the world. If, if you don't toughen up your kids, your kids will never be strong enough to stand on their own. But if you toughen them and you torture them throughout their entire life, by the time they're 18, they'll just fly away from your house. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be like, hey, where are you kids? I'm <laughs> <laughs> coming back. <laughs> they're just I to you know. <laughs> they're telling you how good life is. <laughs> Hey, remember, you got there because we, we made you tough. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> I mean, you talk to any kid who's been, you know, does well in life, they'll tell you how terrible an experience they had with their parents. <laughs> And they, they'll never remember that they're there in their, you know, successful life because the parents made, gave them a terrible life. <laughs> and that's the nature of kids. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what can you do about kids? When you do everything right for them, most, time, most of the time they won't be thankful anyway. So you just got to beat them into men. It took me 20 years to realize that I never lacked for food or clothing yeah. from my parents. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's what parents, all parents can do is raise strong kids who can stand on their own, who can have their own character, <laughs> own principles. Mm -hmm. You gotta raise your kids to be strong. This is love. Love is nice. <laughs> You're all parents, you, you all grew kids, all your kids have grown up a lot of you. You guys must have a lot of experience. <laughs> Does anybody have anything to add? I'm still turning the pages of that book. <laughs> yeah. All you can do is raise them to be on to be able to stand on their own. That's all you can do. <coughs> mm -hmm. And when they screw up and make make their own mistakes, you know they gotta learn to pay for it. Uh, there's uh, one question: uh, How did God uh, uh, educate or uh, raise up Adam? Uh, when he was, uh, I think in the same way, right? Somehow, yeah. Because when he fell and he did real bad things, he kicked him out of the garden and said, "Okay, you're on your own. Go learn." And before him, when he was a baby, was 
very small. Mm. Well, he raised them to learn how to live in the garden and the garden. be themselves. Yeah. The archangels were there to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the challenge which all parents face is you're, you're trying to make your kids stronger and stronger so they can stand on their own. Of course, you want them to understand in the end that you did all of that because you love them. But children, as they grow up, they don't necessarily get there quickly. Yeah. You know, they usually think that you torture them and they have to go their own way for a while until they figure out, well, they did that because now that I experience being a parent, yeah, I don't see why they did that. <laughs> takes it. That's the big challenge is, is to, because the kids are so ego, egocentric, they see things from their point of view. Oh, it, it takes them a long time to is get out the of themselves. I don't know where oh, 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 yes. Far. She's speaking. She got the frog legs. She got frog legs. I think he wants to be eaten by the king. Survival skills. It's a burnt offering now. Yeah. It seems like Father was always trying to decentralize the church. He was. But always dividing things up. So Father was always fighting that yeah. tendency. the thing if you build a large organization and it runs well then the big <coughs> problem is that people start worshiping that creation rather than worshiping God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yep. Yep, so the kingdom is the place where monopolies always get broken up. Mm -hmm. You need big businesses, but in order to have freedom, you got to break up the monopolies. The only people who should be visited by Uncle Sam are the monopolies. Burnt offering, son. Jumped yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into the fire, like in the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> because of the law, uh, trying to be a theologian or anything, but you you actually spend a lot of time reading the Bible, reading Father's words, and the text that he put forward. I'm just kind of curious when and why, what motivated you to do that, and why do you keep doing that? 
I'm not a theologian. I didn't say it, it's about a theologian. I, I'm just saying you do no, that. Well, I've just read personally. the Bible a bit and the principle a bit. Can you not read the truth? Everybody needs to know the principle in God's word. But I mean, what motivated you to start reading in the first place and continue to do so? Well, I've been reading the principle a long time. I mean, I've gone to workshops since I was, you know, 12, 14, so heard the principle an awful lot of times. What else you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Getting ready for hunting season? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Got my permit. Go out hunting. <clears throat> but yeah, this is a nice place. A nice fire. We got a nice garden, a nice farm running here. You guys are really building God's kingdom here, right here in this place. Where, where do you see yourself in six months in your activities? What's that? Where do you see yourself six in months? six months or a year? Well, it's pretty obvious what we're going to do. We're going to just do what we're doing. Well, keep on working, working, building God's kingdom. What else is there to do? Teach the principle. All we have to do is teach the principle, support the king, God's kingdom take root. We'll take root more and more every day. I mean, you know, we're the only place now where OSDP can be heard. We just need to do that more of that. Keep on teaching OSDP. Witnessing for our church community, the unification movement, has always been mathematical. You, know, you put a thousand people through divine principle, you, know, you eventually get ten members. You, know, you, get, you run them through two-day sem two seminars, Maybe out of a thousand, a hundred will go to seven days. And then probably out of the hundred which goes to seven days, you know, ten will ten will go through twenty-one days, and then ten will be, you know become members. That's the most of the thing. The problem is is to establish the organization to continuously run it. And to be able to generate enough income so that you can continue to maintain the principal education. But it doesn't matter who you teach principal to. If you teach enough people, you know, they become members. If you teach a, a thousand millionaires principal, you'll get ten million, ten of them to join the church and become members. If you teach a thousand beggars principal, you get 10 beggars to be members. <laughs> but if you, if you teach the 10 millionaires, then they'll actually pay for their education. <laughs> you probably won't get your money back on the beggars. <laughs> you want to know what the difference between the Japanese church and the other churches are? Japanese church witnesses the millionaires and the other churches witnesses the beggars. <laughs> That's the difference. The same principle. And that's why one church can continuously maintain and continue to witness and the other churches run on money. So 
that's what we're in process of doing. We're in process of setting ourselves up to teach principles to more people. What else should we do? I mean, our community has to have a very specific goal. And the goal of our community is very specific. It's to build God's kingdom on earth. As it is in heaven. And in order to build that kingdom and fulfill God's promise, we have to make principal people. And the only way to make principal people is to teach the principle. Oh, simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that complicated. That's true. Wherever you teach the principle, people always gather. People always c come together as brothers and sisters. That's where the father is. <coughs> you know, that's what we've been discussing is how we do more or OSD How we pay for more OSD a big challenge. What do you guys think? Nope. You want more OSDP? Yes. Yeah. 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 We need more millionaires. Yeah, we need more millionaires. <laughs> 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 more people to pay for the OSDP education. <clears throat> OSDP staff. So that's that's what our community and our church needs to work on is how we teach more principles. What do you think, guys? Is that right. okay with you? Yes. Yeah. Any other suggestions? <laughs> How to connect Europe with the Teach OSDP. <laughs> but we organize, so we're thinking, yeah. And it's good to come, come here. Sure, we'll send Mr. You there. Huh? We'll send, we'll send Mr. Reverend You there to teach it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we have to be able to support that kind of economic activity, so, you know, brothers and sisters to help find a way to make that economic that's, we'll be able to do more of it. But that's what we want to do. We want to we want to be strengthen our education system in the sanctuary movement. I think the focus now for worldwide sanctuary movement is to strengthen the education system. Be able to teach OSDP <coughs> continuously anywhere and everywhere. You've got to go forward with the Word of God. There's no other way. We are, after all, the Orthodox Church. The people who follow the Han Mother are heretics. That's right. getting older in his years. I know he had a hard time standing for seven, eight days. Well, that's what we want him to do. We want him to teach OSDP to the young ones so 
when he kicks the bucket, there'll be people to carry on. But you know, people like Reverend Yu now and of course Mrs. Kong, these are the older generation which are really passing down the Orthodox tradition from the first to the second generation. And so these are really heaven's jewels. <coughs> That's what we have to do. We have to keep God's word and be true to God's word. Preserve it. That's what an Orthodox community does. We don't need new truth. We don't need anything fancy. We just need what Father taught us. That's all. Ajou. Mm -hmm. Ajou. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made that pretty clear. Yeah. So we have to show the way, the right way. Most. <laughs> <laughs> we have the uh, black print. Uh, the black book on the red one, the new one. <coughs> from the you should get that out of your house. I was reading today in Hondoke a little bit from July 21st, like today, 2012, just a few weeks before Father passed. And that was in the last words of that in English translation. It says, all you have to do is follow me, but I cannot teach you in detail. The path of restoration is the path of searching and finding out. So you, trusting me, need to go forward and on the way I'm not supposed to explain to you everything in detail. about it. Anything else? No? no. That was a great ending. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I practice the painting in the OSAT, uh, um, uh, we, we can, uh, in the, in the OSAT, it, it showed us what is the Chani book, why is, why, uh, uh, what is the Chani book, and show the essential of the book, but I feel like um, it doesn't explain the how to make a chanel book. <laughs> well, yeah, she doesn't understand how to make chanel book. <coughs> That's the, you know, he's, he, Reverend Yu is, is like a tape recorder. He takes what he hears and then he regurgitates it. So in, that, in that regard, he's good. But beyond that, he, he, he has, an, of course, an archangelic understanding, so he's not, well, he's not the inheritor. So his point of view comes from the point of view as a servant, not as the owner. And so his, his views are going to be colored by, you know, by his cultural understanding, which is everything has to be done by big government. Mm -hmm. Difference. But he's a very good, you know, tape recorder. And we <laughs> <laughs> 95%. Yeah. 95%. <laughs> 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 
the six memories, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, they are connected uh, to uh, saints uh, uh, or, or merit uh, to saints in the spiritual world. For sure. example, Jesus and uh, Confucius, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are six persons in the spiritual world. Yeah. Augustine also. Sure. Socrates. Uh, I mean the whole the whole notion of six marriages or sixty marriages or six hundred marriages is basically the pro the process of restoration. Mm -hmm. You know, because the world has world when the world was created, it was created as one man and one woman, and so that was supposed to be the start of human history. Mm -hmm. But the world progressed from the from the that family level to the social yeah. clan, clan national and world level. And so there's been an expansion of human history, an expansion of the fallen lineage. Mm -hmm. So when you get to the point of the mission of the Messiah, the, mis the Messiah actually has to reverse that fall. So that means that the, the at, from the world level has to be reduced to the individual level. It means all the women in the world, 3.5 billion women, has to become one woman. So basically what the Messiah comes to do, he comes to marry the object part. Initially, there was only one object part, and when the Messiah came, there were 3.5 billion yeah. object parts. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, if you're looking at the process of restoration, every single object partner in the world is actually supposed to receive the Messiah's yeah. seed. Wow. But that's what the six married providence is about. It's about that since the Messiah physically can't be giving his seed to every single woman, there's representative women through which he transfers his seed representatively to yeah. all the women of the world. And so that process of restoration is a one-time event which the Lord in the Second Coming does. And once it's fulfilled, then it restores the relationship back to one man and one woman. Right. So that's, that's the difference in understanding, is that the Messiah comes as a unique role. He, he comes fully as a man, but he's also fully God. And that's the unique nature of the Lord in the Second Coming. And the, and the unique mission of the Lord is to restore what was lost. And so that process of restoration happens only once. And so once that's done, then it goes back again to the original order, which is one man and one woman. That's what principle requires. And if you study principle and you understand principle, you can you can understand theologically why, why it has to be like that. We were many years in the church, we never heard about it. Uh, That's the problem. I, I ask you, were they ashamed to, uh, to tell us about it? Yes. yes. That's the problem of the archangelic leadership. There's, they were they they are ashamed to teach it. Not only are they ashamed to teach it, but the problem is is that because they didn't teach it, they create the foundation for this rebellion of the Han Mother. Mm -hmm. So that's why for the second king to for him to fully in, come come into his responsibility and become the king, he had to champion the mission of the Messiah and explain the mission of the Messiah. Oh, and that's what the king did. Yeah. Yes. yes. If so, uh, Jesus, if he didn't die, so he had also six married. Well, he should have six, sixty, six hundred, yes, six thousand. <laughs> sure. Same thing. Same Jesus thing. Absolutely. The problem. If you study the study the, the the look at the uncanonized gospels, the, the gospels which are not canonized, especially in regard to the the canon the the uh, gospel of Mary Magdalene, that it, that actually talks about that, because Mary Magdalene's heresy after Jesus' crucifixion was that she was the moon goddess, and Jesus was the sun goddess, <coughs> that they were actually husband and wife and that the apostles have revolved around them. Archaeology now in Israel is discovering er very early Mary Magdalene churches and they found mosaics where they actually 
saw in the center Jesus Christ's picture with, with Mary Magdalene surrounded by 12 disciples. <coughs> so you can see the heresy of Mary Magdalene is identical to the heresy of my mother. Mm. Right. The problem in this story from the bar is the problem of shame. Mm -hmm. Shame? Sh shame. Don't, shame. You, you, you're talking about Noah's family? No, no, shame. No, shame. 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 Generally. This, this uh, the problem is not the shame. The problem is that the blood lineage was changed. The problem with, with, with Adam is that he was basically had his lineage changed because he was dominated by Eve. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you do the three-day ceremony, you have that reversing of that order, where the woman is on top and then the man gets on top at the end, once he is restored from his archangelic position to the position of Sash. <coughs> so in order to reverse the pattern of the fall, the father who comes, the the Christ who comes has to dominate women and has to be on top. I was thinking about the Jesus, the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. They were ashamed to speak about sex. And so. Jesus, I don't think, was ashamed to talk about sex. No, the Catholic Church. Sure. Well, the, the Catholic Church is complete heresy. It's mm -hmm. the same heresy mm -hmm. as Yohan Mother. Because if you look at Catholic theology, who's Catholic here? Well, <laughs> okay. you, you know the teaching of Mother Mary, right? And the, yeah, yeah. the, the sinless yeah. Mother Mary and the ah, perpetual yeah. virgin? You know that Catholic Church teaches that even though Mother Mary had many children, mm -hmm. she never had sex. <laughs> yeah. Even she after she married Joseph. They, they even don't believe that uh, Mother Mary had other children. They don't no, believe they believe they had other children, but they say she never had sex when she had other children. Yeah, yeah. So not only was Jesus Christ born in terms of you know, immaculate conception, no sex conception, all of his brothers were, and sisters were born without sex. <laughs> so then what's the difference between Jesus and his other brothers and sisters? Mm. Yeah. Since his, since they believe that the womb of Mother Mary is sinless and that she was born without original sin. That's, if you look at the, the, the Mother Mary theology in the Catholic Church, that's the only begotten daughter theology, mm -hmm. which is basically fallen Eve theology, it's goddess theology. So this is the misconception which a lot of people have, is they think that the Catholic Church is the church of Peter and Paul. It's not. It's the church of Constantine, Emperor Constantine, who's a pagan. So it's the corruption of Christianity. It's not true Christianity. <coughs> yes, the brother, medical doctor. Mm -hmm. I talk to him. He's a doctor, you know. How can we, we think like that? <laughs> but you know, for for us now in this, on this, with science coming up. The miracles of the Bible are very useful. People are talking about using science to resurrect cat cadavers now. So. I mean, a lot of the miracles in the Bible, you know, God can do. There's no reason to believe that God can't resurrect somebody. Uh, so, uh, Emperor Constantine was actually then uh, not uh, good. His decision or his uh, teachings uh, was not uh, the right way. Constantine was a pagan. Yeah. He, his, basically, he, he, he adopted Christianity yeah. to, as a political convenience. And basically, what he did was he corrupted Christianity. Yeah. He turned it into a state religion, which it was not. Christianity was always between the relationship between individual and God, directly. Many people who left the church, they believe they have they were ma went many times on the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many are convinced they have been on the earth many times. Yeah, that's because they're possessed by many spirits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, it's very clear. There, there's this whole notion <laughs> of reincarnation <laughs> and past lives. Uh, that's not past lives. Those are demonic spirits who, who possess you. Mm -hmm. That's, that's basically that. But don't people they don't look possessed to me. But they yeah. are convinced. Yeah, that's possession. 
They're possessed by a spirit. If you if you did exorcism on it, you can chase those spirits out. But this is the problem of the world today is as they lost Christ and they are no longer filled with the Spirit of God, they're easily filled by other spirits. And that's why you have all these people saying that they're they have past life experience and you know, they've been abducted by aliens and all of that. It's because they don't have God in them, so they're possessed by other spirits. It's just that simple. It's a low spirituality. <clears throat> the divine principle was, was missed, was improperly taught for many years. Like Constantine was like this. The great victory was Constantine, not not revealing as you're revealing clearly. He was a pagan and he used it well, politically. Well, Constantine was a great corruption of the Christian Church. Right. Mm. I'm just saying, but we it was mistaught the, uh, divine principle. It was principle. a Luciferian takeover of Christianity. But, but most workshop we taught, it was a great victory of Christianity after 400 years in Denmark. Well, that's basically, you know, the status wanting to build a state religion. Right. The centralist opinion. It, it'd be good if in OSDP we teach really deeply about Six Marys. Yeah, part we of it. teach about Six Marys. You know, that's, that's the position we have to be very clear on is the nature of restoration. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the nature of restoration requires God's seed to be implanted in every woman. Right. <coughs> and that, that is the essential mission of the coming of the Messiah. And then our teaching is very clear because the Messiah has come in the second coming and fulfilled that mi mission that proceeding going forward all people who follow in the Messiah's footsteps are back to the situation of one man and one woman because the providence of that restoration is done and it's not to be repeated. Mm -hmm. Anybody who says that they have to repeat that is a heretic. Mm -hmm. Right. So those kind of aspects of the theology, we need to, as we go forward, make it very clear on what our theological position is. Mm -hmm. It should not be hidden, it should not be, you know, it, it should be front and center whenever we teach the principle. Mm -hmm. Mission of the Messiah, what the Messiah must do. Well, that's the essence of the blessing, isn't it? Passing yeah. the Messiah's seed Absolutely. through the blessing into uh, blessed marriages. Mm -hmm. So we teach it, and then we teach that that mission was accomplished by Reverend Sun Myung Moon, and that's why we're back to the original order of creation of one man and one woman. Amen. That's what we need to teach. <coughs> So actually, that teaching is essential, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the that's really the big dividing line between the Orthodox Church and the Heretic Church. Mm -hmm. The Orthodox Church sees that the Messiah is fulfilling the mission of the Messiah. The Heretic Church sees the Messiah as a, a man with weakness, mm -hmm. right? Who needs to be saved by the Harlot Mother, mm -hmm. right? <coughs> right. <coughs> So that's why we cannot hide or be ashamed of the mission of the Messiah. We have to go mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. talking about the mission of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. I only realized after last year in October when we came here mm -hmm. and uh, then I, I was at home and uh, suddenly on, uh, on about Christmas time I, I became by car on the highway. Suddenly it came in my mind that the holy wine 
I never saw it before like that. Uh, the Holy Wine must have something to do with Father's seed. Mm -hmm. uh, and right. this was, uh, I felt very sure. This, uh, this yeah. was my first uh, 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 feeling or the uh, acknowledging that uh, it must be like that. Mm -hmm. And this was amazing. During the driving on the highway in the car. <laughs> that came in my mind. <laughs> That's what it's all about. It's about the seed. Yeah. The seed of God. Mm -hmm. But I did not like the stick ceremony. <laughs> well, I never understood. That's the whole point. You need to be tortured to be able to stand on your own. <laughs> <laughs> this was really torture. <laughs> Thank God you got tortured. It's <laughs> 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 You know what they say, right? Pain is weakness leaving the body. Mm. Yeah. I only okay. bones. I was so thin, you know, I was so thin. So a lot of weakness left your body. <laughs> <laughs> and what we, this was in London. We were only a small group. And when brother did not eat enough, he said, once more, once more. <laughs> <laughs> but he did not say that, but by some it, he said, Oh la la, this was a martyrium, even two shouts. Oh, oh, I speak German. <laughs> it was a martyrium just to look at him. <laughs> Somewhere I told you. I saw a blessing. Uh, we were a small group. Father stopped and he said, Okay, now you can choose your partner. I don't know what I did. We were very surprised and then nobody moved, nobody said anything. Yeah, choose your partner, you look and you are free. <laughs> we did. We said, oh God, what we do now? <laughs> <laughs> and then three choose their partner. <laughs> so, anything else? No more questions? Mm. You guys know what we need to do, so I think <laughs> we're all pretty clear. Yep. Thank you for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's give it up one more time. Yeah. There is a bathroom right over here at the lot. Very nice bathroom. It's a composting toilet. Um, <laughs> our trees enjoy that. <laughs> it's over there. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a bonus ball, right? Yeah. All right, thanks, Thank you. 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 Thank you.